and a fine job she does. <coughs> because we don't. <coughs> yeah, Father, son, Holy um, we sit before you, Holy Spirit, conscious of our sinfulness, but aware that we gather in your name. Come to us, remain with us, and enlighten our hearts. Give us light and strength to know your will, to make it our own, to live it in our lives. Guide us by your wisdom, support us by your power, for the glory of God, sharing the glory of Father and Son. We desire justice for all, and enable us to uphold the rights of others. You do not allow us to be misled by ignorance or corrupted by fear or favor. Unite us to yourselves in the bond of love, and keep us faithful to all that is true. As we gather in your name, may we temper justice with love, so that all our decisions may be pleasing to you and earn the reward promised to good and faithful servants. We ask this of you who live and reign with the Father, the Son, one God forever and ever. Amen. Uh, so the agenda there is in front of you, and as I just mentioned, we're going to have to skip... Um, um, some of it, and get right into Scott, because he, he has to leave, and Scott, you're going to want to listen to what Scott has to say. Uh, he is the um, promotions guy. Come on in, guys. Hey, how are y'all? Good. I know JT, what's your name? Jordan Perch. I'm looking for Mike. Or yeah, I'm that. Mike. That's right. Come on in, Jordan. Make yourself at home. And you must be Ryan. He's not here. Right, he won't be here. I'm going to get information. Okay. Um, I want to welcome you, and uh, you're here for the two, re one of two reasons. Either you're here that, that we can pick your brain, you can help us, or you're here as a candidate. And so congratulations to the candidates that have stepped up in a uh, big way. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's send this around. The good news is, each of you have... Just one incumbent. <laughs> That's it. Except for one other has two. Well, one incumbent and one. Other. One incumbent and one. No, just one incumbent. The, the district six has has two. Two challengers, two two challengers yeah. right? And uh, we can talk a little bit more about this later. You should all do some uh, research on your opponent. Uh, I I own, for instance, your. Um, Incumbent is is, oh, is married to a man. There's a lot. There's a lot there. So we might be able to. Howdy. Hello. What's your name? Joe Holscher. Joel. Oh, hey. So I'm sitting here. Yes. Yes. Have it. Yes. Have it. Just for you. Thanks. And um, Joe. Joe is an attorney. I, I forgot to mention that. Uh, uh, Randy's on your Joe, you've run before because we've endorsed you. Yeah. And <laughs> we had no idea we we're going to, our paths were going to meet again. So I, you didn't miss anything. I just welcoming everyone. We just did the opening prayer. And uh, congratulations to all the uh, individuals that have discerned to, to, uh, to run. And we'll have a lot, a lot of resources here for you. Uh, then Wednesday, you're going to go to the, independ uh, the uh, North Side, North Side Independent School District. And I was just mentioning to everyone here, Joe, it'd be good, you're, you're a smart guy, but it'd be good if you don't mention anything about Melissa or Mike Kenneth, your Pater Von Dolan, or San Antonio Family Association at this meeting. Uh, and the whole idea behind it is you, you're pegging yourself. You, you would literally peg yourself and, you know, the school boards, that guy is an informant or that guy is a plant or that guy is a... So you don't want to give that away. You just silence, just be silent. Take it all in, learn as much as you possibly can. Um, so um, Michael, you're up against Sandy. Uh, I own, you're up against Omar. Um, Joe, you're up against David. I don't know if you know David or not. Uh, David, the incumbent. In the same neighborhood. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Um, Sim, you're up against uh, Shanna Corona. And, and she is, she calls the shots. Mm -hmm. Melissa can tell you more about it. Mm -hmm. and, you got a lot behind you. <laughs> and then Steve, he, he knows he's up yeah. against. Yeah. And Steve is a pilot. He's, he's a pilot. He's he will be here. here today, but he's gonna. He'll get his schedule work. Right. To be here. 
So there's five of you, and so congratulations to each and every one of you. So it's our intention to, to back you up and help you every way that we possibly can with resources, information. We have JT here, who's a techie. We have Ryan here, and uh, you're the, he helped Patrick with his campaign, right? I'm Ryan, yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> not, not much more than that, so. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I did help him with the website. Good. And your, your name again? I'm Jordan. I think I'm here for the same reason uh, Patrick said, show up at this meeting. We need some IT. website. Yes, tech, absolutely. So home. JT and, and Jordan. There you go. Thank you. And uh, and we have Randy here who has uh, been a trustee. And uh, uh, Melissa, she's, she's here as a, as a resource because she can tell you with sex education, that kind of stuff, some of the things that are going on and aren't going on that should be going on. And then uh, Scott uh, Stiles, Scott and I sat on a board for many years. Scott is um, a very busy man right now. He runs a publishing company, uh, or a printing company. Yeah. And so he is instrumental in helping us with signs and things of this nature, uh, messaging, that kind of stuff. And we have Dina, who is the wordsmither of all wordsmithers, <laughs> and uh, how to, how to uh, get your point across. Um, and so, with that in mind, I'd like to just turn it over to Scott because he does have to leave and we've got about, Scott, what do you have, 10 minutes worth? Yeah, I mean, worth? you know, it's probably more question-based than anything, but... Uh, oh, by the way, real quick, anything on finance, anything specifically on the campaign, wait till the end, if you would. We'll, 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 we'll cover those issues at the end, okay? So, we'll just take in the information right now. So, Scott, go ahead. So, you can stay right there if you want or you can yeah. here. You yeah, mind. if you don't mind. Um, basically, I own a printing company where we do print. We print wide formats, so we print the four by eight signs that go on the side of the road. Um, a lot of direct mail. We've got in-house uh, digital. You know, we work with Dina a lot, and we have uh, sources for larger runs of out, of offset printing, which I don't think any of these campaigns would would do. We do every cycle. We do. You know, we've probably got. We're running probably 15 campaigns right now, and in varying stages, either. The whole thing where we do the messaging and the you know graphic design, uh, and that's a small portion. Mostly, what we do is we'll work with somebody like Dina, where she gives us the design elements. Um, we do and we do the execution piece where we'll get the data, and uh, and do the actual execution on the print, put it in the mail, and uh, and that's about it. And you know, talk to Mike a little bit about uh, how much you're going to try to put together to run these campaigns. Uh, most of it is, you know, depending on how you want to run it, if you want to run it more on the digital side and do more Facebook and more homegrown type stuff, or if you want to do it kind of old school with direct mail and, and signage. Um, I think the, like the more balanced approach is probably the best. you got to get some signage out there, because if you have no signage, people don't know that you're <coughs> running, but it, it will not move the needle. We've seen people spend a lot of money on signs and nothing on direct mail, and it does nothing that people don't vote based on the signs um, people vote based on direct mail and direct contact either by website fit you know or social media or old school direct mail um, from a cost standpoint the four by eights they you know they cost about 40 bucks a piece to to print digitally in the quantities that y'all would probably end up printing which is 10 or 20 i'm guessing i don't yeah uh, and, uh, and then you've got to either have somebody put them out, and there's one guy in town that puts them out who's a, do you know, you've run before. I, I have, I had my sign stolen, and so, I had my sign guy switch teams. And <laughs> yeah, so, it's, all, it's all very fun. So the guy that puts them out is a guy named Leo, and Leo is, uh, he's just a thug. I mean, he's tattoos on his neck, and he's just straight gangster. And he charges 20 bucks to put them out, and he makes sure that they stay up. <clears throat> And if you don't pay Leo, they don't stay up. Oh. So you can work it out however you want to. Uh, I don't have any affiliation with Leo, but if you're going to kind of do it homegrown and go put them up on a Saturday, um, you know they should mostly stay up. But you'll you'll lose some of them because either Leo will be doing signs for the one of the competitors, or, and yours just don't make it up or whatever. But that's a kind of the hairy part of it, the direct mail part of it. Um, so from that standpoint, you know, you're looking at, he charges 20 and just so, you know, 40, 
50 60 dollars per sign so you're going to have six eight hundred bucks sign. Hmm? yeah 20 bucks each sign to put up, yeah, twenty dollars to put them up. You can go put them up yourself. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Oh, he had, to put it up. Well, basically, we're paying them not to take them down. K kind yeah. of. I mean, I don't. You know, it's just. Uh, it's like when you go to Mexico, say, "Take care of my car; it will be pristine." If you don't do that, yeah, you're you're lucky if your car is there when you get back. Up. Are you saying twenty dollars per, per sign? sign. Per like sign to put them up, and then there's you know, if you're doing limited quantity, if you're doing a hundred of them. You can get the price down to around thirty dollars for the production of the sign. This is for full digital, which is the only thing that we do. We don't do what, like this is a one color, two color screen printed. Um, we don't do that, and in the quantities of ten and twenty that you would be putting up, they won't do it. Nobody will burn a screen for you to just do ten signs. Mm -hmm. or if they will, but it'll be more expensive than what we would charge. Um, and. This isn't like a sales pitch for my company. It's you're gonna, you know, you're welcome to go shop around and and uh, you know try to find a the better a better deal. But you're about fifty to sixty dollars per sign location that you put out. That's for four by eights. You can maybe do five of those, you know, strategically, and then try to dress up the poles, the polling sites with uh, eighteen by twenty four yard signs. So on the on the big signs, you can get ten or twelve yard signs out of a four by eight. Whether we give you a four by eight or you cut it up and make and we make you know ten signs out of it, it doesn't matter to me. It's the same thing. So you're at about four to five bucks for for a one sided or four dollars for a one sided eighteen by twenty four yard sign. Um, and I think it's six dollars. It's two dollars for us to print the back side. Mm -hmm. Something. Yeah, Patrick said uh, seven bucks. You're safe. Yeah, and that's and then it's a dollar for the right. H tape. Right. Um, again, you've got to have them, but they don't move the needle. They don't. Nobody is going to drive by and see your sign and be like, "I'm voting for that guy or that girl." It just doesn't do anything. It's just name recognition. It's so that when they see your name on the ballot, they recognize oh yeah I remember seeing those signs around and that you were an active uh, candidate so you want to do the minimum possible to check the box and then um, from a direct mail standpoint you know we have you can spend it's basically 40 cents a piece for postage printing data the whole thing you know after everything's said and done if you're doing quantities above a thousand two thousand pieces um, we're gonna print everything digitally because these are all pretty small runs I wouldn't imagine that any one of the districts you know how many what the voter population in, in those well I'm thinking about that it's it's a piece of eight all of nine a piece of ten and a piece of one I'm talking about city districts. Yeah, yeah. so we're looking at Joe might know, but we're looking. Yeah, go ahead. Sam. It's about thirty-five to forty thousand per district. Per district. Okay. The, they give it out in these pilots. Okay, that's very good. That voters. That voters. sounds. That sounds right because right. District right. Nine is uh, two hundred thousand people yeah. roughly. And you're gonna, you know, the way that a lot of times people will come to us candidates and they'll say, you know, okay, I want to run a campaign for the uh, for Republicans uh, in this district, and we want to do a mailing. It's like, okay, well, how much money do you have? Because that it's everything's predicated on how much money you have. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take. Um, when is this? When is this cycle? When is this May election? May second. May second. Mm -hmm. Plus early voting. Okay, so what we're going to do is say, okay, well, you know, if you have a thousand dollars, we're going to try and deploy that thousand dollars as efficiently as possible, and we'll just say, okay, we're going to take. We know we can mail out, you know, however many pieces, and it's really a thousand dollars would be enough to do one mailer. And we're just going to keep knocking it down to people that voted in two of the last city elections. Okay, we have too much data, too many people. Okay, the last three elections, last four elections, and we're just going to keep paring it down to where the people that we send it to have the highest probability of returning to the polls, and those are the only people you want to communicate with. Um, and then we can do other things where. Uh, do you, you guys understand that we're not? We don't want to mail the whole district because of the price point there. So he's saying, let's get it down to the real hardcore data. So we we purchase that? the data from Bear County Elections every cycle. So every cycle we go down there, buy it, I populate my database, and then we can run 
you know, queries against yeah. it. Um, so we can look at, you know, we get to where we get down to three, the last three, you know, last three city cycles, and we still have too many people. So we say, okay, well, let's go multiple people in the household. Mm -hmm. So where there's, you know, two or more voters in the household, we mm -hmm. won't send it to anybody where there's just one voter in the household. People will say, well, I want to mail to those people because I think they might show up. It's like, okay, well, then get more money. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, it's not, it just comes down to a function of we're going to try to get the money that uh, either you raise or that you're putting in yourself, uh, and we're going to try and use it as efficiently as possible so that the people that you're communicating with have the highest likelihood of showing up to the polls because what the worst thing to do would be to send something to somebody and they would go, this gal's great, and then they don't. Yeah. Go vote. Well, that's what I was going to say. Is look, you have to remember that uh, voter turnout is usually pretty low. So, when you, you're talking about a district that has 35 or 36,000 people in it. But of those who actually vote, you only need to get like a thousand votes or <laughs> something like that. I mean, whatever yeah. the stat is. So, how can you most efficiently reach those thousand people? And that's the idea. And, and really, I mean, in a in a bigger campaign, we we do three pieces is kind of the standard play, and the first piece is a fluff piece. Um, second piece is another intro piece or kind of a policy piece and then the third piece is a comparative piece so in, uh, in one of these we would kind of go soft on the first one and just intro a picture of your family or whatever and this is who I am the second piece would be uh, these are the things that I want to get done and then the last piece right before early voting is usually um, a stark contrast piece you can call it a slam piece you know depending on how you want to uh, couch it or whatever, but it's just to draw a very clear line between you as a candidate and the person as the incumbent, and that's what it's you know it's just a standard. But if you don't have the money and you've got one mailer, well, you kind of got to compress all of those things and do it all, do it all in one mailer. Um, these are harder because I don't you know I don't know any of these people. You'd have to do some pretty deep you know opposition research. Uh, if you have the time or inclination or whatever, um, and again, it's going to go back to money because if you can find, you know, if you find out that uh, one of these people has, you know, a mistress and you know never paid their taxes, and that's great, but you're going to have to pay to communicate that. Nobody is going to the Express News isn't going to pick this up and do anything with it. It's going to be up to you to to message that uh, if you decide to do it. And there's a lot of campaigns that say I, I'm just not going to. I'm not going to play in that arena, which we, you know, I would respect either way. It's mm -hmm. Well, we've used Scott, or Patrick used Scott, we have used, uh, for Safe, we use Scott, uh, I don't know, 10 years now, yeah. right? And, and so we've shot, we've done all that stuff. And, uh, full disclosure, we used to sit on a board together. And, and, and from uh, a pricing standpoint, we're a whole, I'm a wholesaler. Most of my work is done for, I get subbed out by printers when they get, projects in so from a price point I'm you know this I'm really this is I don't say this isn't what we do but the majority of my business is wholesale so y'all would be the, the beneficiaries of of that and our you know in our pricing scheme but I just check prices and y'all beat everybody so. yeah I know we should yeah. probably raise them <laughs> <laughs> what's that what's the name of your company Alamo mailing he He's done Allied Women's Center. He does all kinds of nonprofits. Does all their invitations. This kind of so it's not just political realm, but he does bulk, as he yeah. mentioned. It's, it's bulk stuff. Yeah, and good, good, sharp pieces, not, not garbage. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Scott is going to be here. If you have any, if he's a resource. Uh, he loves what he does. He's passionate about what he does. He's going. He's currently going to law school. So Randy, you might want to talk to him before he. Leaves. He's currently going to law school. That's what the world needs. Just one more lawyer. <laughs> yes. I, yes. I've already told you, Randy is in our business, so apparently he. I'm, I'm just, it's I'm a nice story. It's a nice story. Sort of sort of like. The voter data that you purchased huh? is that usable for block walking? Yeah. Yeah. So would it be better to put it to some type of phone app that's out there to help with block walking? They have phone apps. Most of them are, are uh, proprietary. We, like, we, we can help you there, yeah. But they, they got the Republican Party one that yeah. we have access to, Sam, so we can help okay. you there. Yeah. All right. You, you, we'll talk about that, yes. Right. 
And, but in, in, in either way, I can give you the data, we can walk sequence, so it's in a postal carrier route sequence, but it's going to be one house, skip mm -hmm. eight houses, right. next house. Yeah. And you still um, need a push card. But we, and we can do door hangers. Yeah. Um, and that's another way to do it. If you're short on money and long on time, um, we can do you know 10,000 door hangers and you can walk, walk, and door hang at the same time. Uh, obviously, the you know when you're paying for a direct mail piece, it's cost of the data, the cost of the the printing of the mail piece and the postage, and then the lion's share goes to the post office. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're willing to do some of the some of the block walking, uh, you could you could run a campaign and win just on block walking. But it's you say block walking, door door hanging, door, door hanging and block walking. Top yeah. Top foot, foot. So uh, if you say door hanging and then block walking the ones that show up as hard voters and leaving a push piece and ringing their doorbell and talking to them and the rest just hanging. hanging yeah, the and people are gonna you know if you if you door hang every every door and. People are going to just know your name, and people are going to say, "Oh, you know the 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 you know the school board's got an election coming up, and they're going to say, oh, I got a piece from yeah. so and so stuck on my door,' and you're going to piss off half the people, and the other half of the people are going to speak positive about it. You know, so it's it's a double edged sword. But or you could just door hang the people that are regular yeah, regular voters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a quick question, uh -huh. Scott? Just, just, just quick, because yeah. you're going to get Randy. Um, the, so, like, I'm thinking about how I manage my mail, and I'm not very good at it. So, like, I have a pile of mail this high that's, like, two weeks old. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'll go through and solicitation, solicitation, solicitation. And so I don't see those very well, but I, I do see what's on my door. Do you have any data related to that? Or no, like I mean. Type of pe just different people's personalities. You know, and, yeah, you know. and people are, there's common boxes now where people check their mail with a lot less frequency. Mm -hmm. People, you know, batch check it. Like, I'm in the business and I, I let it pile up and check in the batch. But uh, I don't, you know, I would say that you're probably would be more effective with a door hanger than... You know, it's one single piece sitting on your door. It's the time. Well, what yeah. I was going to say is that also, I mean, I, I'm like you in that I don't know too much about what the trustees do. I mean, some of these incumbents, did they have marking pieces? For the, I, I don't remember really seeing signs for people running for, I've, for trustees. So. I've, done, I've done signs for some of so them. So if it's if people who normally wouldn't have a, a competitor might not do a whole lot of... No, and, you know, if you if you put in enough money, you could buy this election it's just that I mean it's you know the people that you know somebody was talking about Shannon Rona she's got a lot of internal support right but that's a circle of yeah. a couple hundred people that's right and you can buy you could buy all the other people that just walk in there just and they're like uh, I don't know I've just seen this guy's name 50 times in my yeah. mailbox what that's size of a campaign is that I mean like you were like compared to what you were just talking about you know I think if you were to spend 15,000 on a campaign which may like be like mm -hmm. you know I think you could I think you could just whip it um, because you would just you'd have Hundred signs out in a pretty small, you know, these are small areas geographically. You know, if you've run for county office or, yeah. uh, you know, you're just, it's all, it's, you know, you start talking about Bandera and 1604 and 151. It's just the city is so big where these are pretty compact, tight, compact areas that you can. So, so, so basically, if you find 60 of your best friends and say, hey, you can just give me 250 bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. And then on the finance side, y'all talk about that later. But there's, yep. you know, ways you can loan yourself the money and get it back later. And uh, okay, yeah, <clears throat> very good. Thank you, Scott. Um, and if you need all the Scott, you know, contact us. We'll get in, in touch with Scott. And if you want to use Dana for some of the layout, and that kind of, that's the whole idea here is that you guys can use some of the stuff. Yes, JT. One last question: What's 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 the timeline? When do these when do these things start to have have to go out? So this week, Monday, or tomorrow, early voting starts. Um, Thursday of last week was the like the drop dead date. It had to be in the mail by then. He's talking primaries. Primaries. So we had to. So it, before the the week before early voting is going to be your last piece. Mm -hmm. If you have one piece. It's going to be that time. And when is that? 
Well, whatever May's April, April, April whatever. April something in there. Yeah. April so when, I mean, so what, what's what's the window when you need to start getting stuff out? Well, depending on how many pieces you're going to do, you're going to want. If you if you were going to do kind of a what is when does early voting start? Do you know? April twenty. So the. Uh, so, I'll jump in. So, yeah, so you might you might have an introduction piece that, that hits like right after primary, mm -hmm. for instance. Then you might have early voting hit one week before or a couple of days before early voting, mm -hmm. and then you might have if you have enough money. This is all predicated on money, like Scott said. Sure. You might have one showing up before uh, election day. Um, if you only have one piece, you can't afford all three of those. Then you want to do the days before early voting starts, and hopefully that carries through yeah. to the, the election day. Sure. April fifteenth would be that piece would be the last piece. Uh, April eighth would be the piece before that, um, and April first. And then ideally, if you were gonna, you know, if you had, if you were just loaded with money, you would drop another piece during early voting that would be there for the election day piece. But you know talking about Melissa and checking her mail in a batch format, we've had people that say, well, I want to just mail one piece and I want it to get there right before election day. And she keeps it for two weeks. And then I pull it out to That's go, exactly oh, I could have it. voted for that person. So, so, you're, mess, you're messing up all kinds of people. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. I'm not trying to sell more mail, but that's that's the idea is that you would drop those and then you would suppress the list of everybody that's voted in early voting. You'd have a smaller universe and then you'd mail one more time before the election day. Very good. Okay, we got to move on because yep. of time. Uh, so uh, if you, again, if you need to talk to Scott, you want us to relay a question or what have you, uh, see Dina, myself, Patrick, and we will definitely get uh, get it to Scott and, and figure out, you know, what maybe your plans are. And, and like Scott said, shop around, but we have. And feel free to, maybe you know somebody in the printing business. Yeah. Um, so I, like, I want to introduce now um, uh, Randy Fields, uh, again, uh, an attorney. Uh, but Baylor, Baylor Bear, is his alma mater. And uh, we know each other professionally, and uh, Randy does some incredible things in the trading uh, of securities, mainly options. Yeah, I don't need to go through all that, but he's a, he decided years ago to get out of law and get into our business. And, I remember him telling me he's sick of you know, up in Milano, the Permian Basin, you know, after years of the of the oil run, literally accounting for and cutting checks for six cents and ten cents, you know, because the family had had grown and you know it's the, he has he owns one thirty second of whatever way, and, and he realized that life is too short. So, uh, but Randy has uh, has has been a friend and uh, a. a uh, a good partner, but he he uh, sat on the Northside Independent School District. So we went through this battle in 2016. Uh, Randy is all too familiar with what goes on in a, a board of trustee, and so we thought that it would be very good for Randy to share some of the wisdom. We've jotted down some questions here that that we want uh, Randy to address. Uh, things such as the uh, the Northeast Independent School District. Just so you know. It's whatever the superintendent want, we pretty much rally behind the superintendent. Well, that doesn't always work, and so there's so these are the kind of things that you need to be aware of. So uh, let's uh, let, let's turn over to Randy, and Randy, maybe you can just kind of just talk a little bit about your experience mm -hmm. and the internal workings, and hit some of these these hot points that we've put down here. Okay, uh, I don't have your list of questions. Oh, you don't. No. So, well, the first one is. Uh, I'll just hit you with it. the biggest issues in, in, in ISD. Money. Yeah. <laughs> it's always money. I uh, just give you a little bit more about my background. I was on the Northside board from uh, 99 through 2013. And uh, I was president of the board for two years and various other officers for about, I don't know, four or five years, I guess. He was a Shannon, Shannon Verona. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Northside, it, it, each district is unique. I mean, there's even a big difference between NEISD and NISD because of the growth factor. NEISD is basically pretty much built out. It's a, it's a huge district. It's a big district. But uh, NISD, the one that I was, the board that I was on, 
is about half built out. Helotus is the, is the geographic center of our district, so it's still growing and will continue to grow for you know, the rest of my life. Uh, we've got 11 comprehensive high schools and we're building the 12th, and plus four or five magnet schools. And Anyway, it's a, it's a big operation. Uh, Waco, uh, Waco, I was just in Waco, I was sitting in a basketball game at Baylor, in fact. Uh, San Antonio ISD, on the other hand, is, uh, it's, uh, uh, losing, it's landlocked, it's losing population. Uh, they're, they're having to close schools every now and then, which they, they should, and that's a huge, huge uh, uh, fight when the school is proposed to close. Uh, we're nowhere near that. Northeast is nowhere near that. I'm not sure about the Northeast has probably got about 80,000 kids, I'm guessing. Sounds about right. It's a big district. We've got 110,000 in Northside. Uh, our tax base is probably about 40 billion right now. And the annual budget the last year I was on the board was about a billion dollars. And the uh, bonded indebtedness was about I don't know, eight or nine billion, something like that. Uh, Northeast Independent School District is right at a billion right now. For debt, bonded indebtedness? No, no, total oh, 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 uh, Budget. Budget. Budget, okay. The, uh, uh, so it's, it's a big situation. We are, uh, well, I keep saying we, Northside is in a continuing building mode. Uh, for a while there, we were having to add one classroom per day on average to keep up the growth. It's slowed down a little bit now, but it's still, you know, a thousand kids a year is our growth. Northeast is a little bit different. Uh, they still have a huge capital budget, but uh, they are renovating schools, and Northeast's policy is to, once a school reaches a certain age, uh, they take about a three or four year period and basically knock it down and rebuild it. Uh, we live not too far from Lee High School. Okay. And Lee is, has been going through that for about the last three or four years. And it's a brand new school. You know, Lee is, is 50 years old, but the yeah. facility is a brand new school. They do a good job of doing that. But to manage all that, money is always the number one issue, the number one priority. Everything else falls uh, under under that issue. It's a, um, you know, it's. It, I used to say it was infinite needs with finite resources. And um, uh, so you've got the, the capital budget, um, the, uh, every time the legislature meets, it's always interesting. You know, as, as, as you all know, <laughs> everybody's got issues before the, the legislature. With the public school districts, it's, uh, it's always uh, funding. And the, uh, uh, the challenge, uh, one of the challenges right now, uh, I think it's a good challenge, is from the uh, charter school districts. There are, the charter schools are popping up. My youngest daughter works for a charter school district in Houston, so I'm becoming more sympathetic to charter school districts. <laughs> Yeah, I did. Yeah, Elizabeth. Yeah, she works for Yes Prep. Okay, which has about ten thousand students. Yeah, uh, and uh, uh, so that is, those are growing, and uh, that's cut down on the on the pup, the uh, student growth per year for uh, at least Northside and, and I think North. What North do they lose? Also, uh, like seventeen thousand dollars per student? No, no, it's not. What is it? No, the uh, the average. State payout is like it used to be five or six thousand dollars per student. Okay. So the charter district has to come up with additional money to uh, to meet that. Okay. To meet the state, you know what what it costs per student over and above the state allotment. Okay. And the the public school districts have uh, property tax, have the board tax uh, that we make up the difference between what the state gives us and what what we need. The charter school districts have <coughs> grants and donations and things like that. Uh, so it's a little bit different of a mix. Yeah. It, it's interesting that the uh, Catholic system has always had about roughly 5% of the students. 
in the north side. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just been that way for probably 50 years. And so the, the uh, now as the number of students in the district grow, the, the Catholic system will also grow. <coughs> um, we used to, we, I mean, we look at the Catholic system as we're glad they're there. <laughs> Because it, it takes some of the pressure off of the of the public district, but it all boils down to uh, uh, dollars and cents, and that's what drives everything. Let's talk a little bit about the agenda. Um, you, you were president. Did you? Did the superintendent comes in. Look, I want to do this. Did you just automatically say whatever you want, superintendent? I mean, how did that? How did the dynamics no, work? No, quite work. <laughs> uh, First of all. The, what you see in the uh, uh, the formal meeting that you're going to, which meeting you're going to? They're going on Wednesday, they're going to uh, oh, introduction. Candidate yeah, orientation. Yeah, orientation. NEISD. Yeah. NEISD. Yeah, okay. Uh, but you, you haven't been to a meeting yet. You need to go to a meeting. Those are. Actually, immediately following, I'm, there's a special board meeting okay. after the candidate orientation. Well, stick, stick this. See how things work. Uh, the meetings tend to be long and boring yeah. for the most part unless they're discussing boundary changes between elementary schools then they get real exciting <laughs> <laughs> so, just an elementary huh? oh yeah just, that's, the, that's the big thing I don't want my kids going over there or I do want my kids going over there yeah it's a it's a amazing but no the uh, the decision process and I'm sure Northeast is, is the same way we were uh, takes place really at the uh, committee level. Uh, there we had, I don't know, eight or ten standing committees, uh, uh, academics, facilities, uh, uh, athletics, uh, you know, and then we had a budget and finance committee, which I wound up chairing uh, for four or five years. And so the, the detailed presentations and the uh, uh, the consensus building is done at the committee level. By the time it gets to the open board meeting, it's either a done deal or you will never see it because it didn't reach the light of day. Yeah. Now, there, it, no, the, the, if the superintendent comes in and says, well, I want to do this and I want to do that, uh, no, there are lots of questions. And, you know, what's the impact on uh, various things from uh, you know, starting with the budget, what's the impact on uh, academics for this particular decision, uh, what is the, uh, what's the view of this going to be in the, uh, uh, in the public in our, for our constituents. And uh, I heard you mention sex ed a while ago. That's always an exciting discussion too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, to your credit, North North Side Independent School District is the only one that has a decent sex ed step. Uh, the rest of them have all fallen into the Planned Parenthood sex ed. And North, they, North has not. North Side has not. As best as I can tell. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah. You say that because th that would come up not even once a year, but once every couple of years to mm -hmm. uh, review this and we'd get a report and uh, usually, you know, at the committee level and um, there'd be some minor adjustments, minor recommendations. Um, so, but that, that's where the, this, the decision process takes place. Can that's you explain the, com like committees, who makes up the committees? The uh, board president, at least our system was, the board president will appoint the committees and then that will be approved by the board. Is it, and so is it employees on the committees? No. No. Just, oh, no, no. Just, just, board, just members. board members. Just board members yeah. on the committee. So like two or three of the right. board members might be on this committee. Exactly. In fact, it's got to be three uh, or less. Now, there are <coughs> staff that will, that will not be members of the committee but will have input. Like when I was in charge of the finance committee, I, there would be four or five finance staff people there. And we'd have outside consultants come in and talk to us about bond issues or whatever. Uh, but the uh, the committee itself would only have three. So, so you're saying that even though you have a even though you may have a board of trustees of six people, it's, seven. it's or seven, you have one person who's responsible for for selecting or, or or appointing committee members. Yeah, well, and but it's it's an open process. And that when I was uh, president of the board, yeah, I would you know poll. Okay, you know you you were on this committee last year. You want to stay on? Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, you want to rotate off, mm -hmm. uh, who else would like to be on this, I mean, give me your preferences, mm -hmm. and uh, then mm -hmm. I would come up with a, a list, and it would be presented at a board, at an open board meeting and voted on. So where does that pool of people come from? I mean, where Oh, it's the, it's the board members. Oh, oh, so the board members get to say, hey, I, here's here's a list of oh, two yeah. people, okay. No, no, well, okay, no, you're, you're, you're saying two different things here. These are board committees, so it's only the board, of, only a trustee can be a voting member of that committee. See what I'm saying? Oh, I got it. I see what you're saying. So oh, finance, so, so, so that might be three for finance. Got it. So the board, so the board of trustees are are, are on different committees. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, okay, got it. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Can I have more than three board members on a particular committee, though? Yeah. Because so of the I Open Meetings it. Act. Yep. Yeah. Once you have a majority of the board at any, any one committee, you run the risk of Open Meeting Act. Of voting on something mm -hmm. when you shouldn't be, mm -hmm. and it can be a criminal violation of yeah. the law. So yeah. you know, we got to be very, very careful about that. In your experience, when the when the committee decided on something and then it went to the overall board, mm -hmm. um, did the overall board just always support the committee, or was there like good conversation about what they were recommending? Oh, there's usually good. You know, it depends on what it is, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, from the finance standpoint, Northside has had a bond issue. Now I think we're doing it every four years. And so anytime a bond issue is recommended by the committee, then that's going to be, you know, discussed. Uh, there's going to be a lot of discussion about that mm -hmm. and about the size of the bond, and, you know, and and what's going to be, and what are the projects in there. So there's going to be a lot of discussion about that. On the other hand, there's one committee I never served on, and I always threatened mm -hmm. whoever the president was, if you ever put me on that committee, I'm going to quit. <laughs> and that was the building committee, oh, because gosh. they discussed colors. <laughs> and I, the rule I had was, don't ever ask me about color, because I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't care. But there were some board members that uh, really enjoyed being on that committee. And that was a lot of detailed work that very seldom ever got discussed. I mean, it was, here's the recommendation, proposal. Yeah. So Randy, she's saying that a lot of the votes are seven to zero, the unanimous votes. And so is there a lot of committee work that is not controversial, I guess? A lot of that's not controversial, or is there just support? No, a lot of, a lot of it's not controversial. Some of it is at the committee level. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But a board yeah. member, in theory, should be able to, he doesn't have to go along with the committee recommendation no. if he doesn't oh, no. think it's in the best interest. Nope. So if we have seven, eight years of every single vote is seven to zero, that as a com community doesn't feel very good. Like, or, like everything's always well, being decided by a small group of people. And again, once, by the time it gets to the, to the open board, it's either going to be, uh, everybody's going to feel, feel pretty good about it, or it will have died in a committee. No the theatrics. Never reached the open board. Yeah, no theatrics to speak of. How, how can that? Right. How does that happen, Randy? If there's only three on the, on a committee, how do the other four members learn about what's going on we before talk, they could support? We talk about it. <laughs> so, do any of those conversations violate open act, open no. meeting act? As long as it's, one, as long as one, it's one. not a majority. Ah, okay. Sitting down at the same time uh, and discussing school business. That's a meeting, if you do that. You can email back and forth, that's not a meeting? You gotta be careful about that. Okay. You gotta be very careful about that. <clears throat> They'll and train us on that, board. right? Pardon? They'll train us on that? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah, because it's, it's a big deal. Uh, Sims an attorney, so he, he might be asking okay. questions. So. Well, in fact, when we, uh, uh, once a year, we usually attended the uh, uh, Texas Association of School Boards meeting, mm -hmm. uh, annual meeting. And we would always go out to, to dinner a couple of times. The, the, the board and the superintendent, and some of the deputy superintendents. And we have to be very careful to not discuss school business at that meeting because you got the full board there. And if you had a, 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 a substantive discussion of school business, then you've had a meeting in violation of the Texas Open Meetings Act. So yeah, it's it's a serious deal. But each of those committee members could go have lunch individually oh, yeah. with another committee member and tell them what's going on in committee. Yeah. And that doesn't violate. No. 
Okay. No. Um, what else? Anyway, it, 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 it happens at the committee level. If you want to influence something that's going to be on the board or not on the board, yeah, uh, the thing to do is to go see the uh, trustee in your district, your single member district, and butthole them and sell them on the idea, and that's the way to do that. Ah. Showing up at the board meeting is a done deal. It's usually a done deal, and uh, there's you know there's, you can make statements and and uh, <coughs> people do at every meeting. But uh, uh, so ninety five percent of the time, it's so, yeah. so how do you know what's how do you know what's what, what's on the current what, in, in the current committee so that you can be proactive and yeah and, or do they do they have a list of well, hey, the, here's the current committee no, the, the for agenda being has to be published is on the websites you're talking about for committee meetings yeah I know and uh, I don't remember. Agenda and minutes, probably. Oh yeah, we, the, so uh, they, have minutes, but I, I think we publish our committee agendas too. That's, I've never seen it. I've never really because they it. are they are open meetings also. The committee meetings. Oh yeah, yeah. Anybody can, any citizen can walk in and participate. Yeah, just so you, you guys have heard us talk about the shack. Yeah. The, sh the shack is an open. It's supposed to be an open meeting <laughs> until we ruined it, but uh, that is in essence would be like a, a, a committee meeting in the shack, which is the Student Health Advisory Committee. I knew that. Uh, right, the <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, they're open to I think in the years I was on the board, I can remember one finance committee meeting where somebody came in and wanted to sit in and listen. Hmm. I, normally, nobody does. So I'm, I'm sure that, in thinking back on it, that uh, the, an agenda is published and a notice that you know this committee's meeting. We have to we have to move on. So here here's what I'd ask you to do is get get give me any questions you might have, and, and then I can call Randy or Patrick, and we can email him, and he I, he's willing to help any way that he possibly can. Um, and I mean anything specific that you think about. But Randy's a resource, and um, I, I want to thank him publicly for helping us out here, Randy. Sure. Uh, okay. And uh, we, we really think we have a, ch uh, a good shot at changing the Northeast Independent School District. It's been going south pretty fast, at least in the sex ed and some other things area. I don't know about the finance and what have you. But these candidates need to know the whole picture, not just the sex ed picture. And I'm, I'm glad you were able to do that. Yeah, it's, it's a big job. It's a very important job. Uh, and, um, yeah, I, I would say... Congratulations for uh, uh, willing to take that on. But yes, sir. Well, I know you want to move on, but <clears throat> seems to me you haven't gotten to the two most important items, especially since we're activists here. Well, we have to be out of here at six thirty, so because it says, it says how to best handle opposition to the superintendent or their ideas, and how to overturn previous bad ideas. So if we're going in there to change any sex ed program, these things I think are critical. So how would you do that? The, well, everything's done by majority. So a simple majority. Mm -hmm. Right, but how do you, how do you and, best overturn, you know, go against the opposition to the superintendent or how do you? Did you guys ever oppose the superintendent, Randy? <clears throat> I know some things were initially brought up that, you know, we said, no, I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah. And they were buried and I, I can't recall. That might be different than Northeast Independent, because Northeast, I'm just letting you know what, what took place as, as, as Shannon, uh, Shannon and Corona came to us that, you know, whatever Gotori wants, we pretty much rally behind him and get him what he needs. She, she publicly told us that. When he thanked him at the January meeting, yeah. after he was officially that. Thank right. you for always having my well, back. Yeah. What I, yeah. That's not healthy. No, no it, 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 there's a lot of symptoms that say it's not healthy. But I, the, uh, the the simple thing is majority rules, mm -hmm. and if you've got a majority on the board and you want to get something done, then unless it's illegal uh, and or, or prohibitively, you know, cost prohibitive, it'll get done. And the, uh, uh, you know, we followed Robert's rules of order. Uh, and Is there a parliamentarian? 
Uh, no. At, at least in Northside, we did not. Now, I was on the board, uh, an attorney, and run lots of meetings, and we had uh, one or the other attorney on the board, so he and I would, you know, usually rule on our supporters. <coughs> but it was the president that, of the board that was in charge. But no, if a, if a, a majority wants to get something done, uh, they get done. At the last meeting last week, the president asked for new business to be put on next month and adjourned in the same sentence, and that's a pretty common thing. Instead of, do we have any new business, pause, wait and see if there's, it was literally call for new business and adjournment in the same sentence. Um, so in that situation, would a board member just say, well, hold on, point I'm not ready order. to adjourn, point of order, yeah. um, new business, and like you kind of have to, point okay. Of order. You have yeah. to, yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's if you're not familiar with Robert's Rules of Order, get familiar with Robert's Rules, rules there, of Order. There's some, you can get on the internet, yeah. you know, one or two laminated pages gives you all this stuff, or you can read the whole book. <laughs> Sim probably read the whole book. Yeah, I read the whole book. <laughs> you can buy a little pamphlet. A little pamphlet. Two or three pages. Yep. Yeah, That's all you need. Gives you all you need. <laughs> but it's a way to keep order and, uh, you know, and they got to follow it. That's so. right. Very good. Thank you, Randy. I appreciate that. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. Thank you. You can stick around for the next uh, sex ed and everything if you want to. <laughs> we don't have time for sex ed today. Thank you, Randy. Good luck. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, can we kind of just make a statement real quick? Yeah. So this last um, feed on um, power. Okay. So I think we all know, but just to be clear, what appears to be happening, and it's been happening for many, many years, is our school, the power structure that Northeast ISD seems to fall under is the superintendent first, employees second, board third. Meaning that what the superintendent and employees recommend tends to be what happens. But what is supposed to happen and the way our community is supposed to be represented is that the board of trustee is to represent our community and the people that elected them. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, they're the ones that should be making the decisions. They're the ones that hire and fire the superintendent. They should be holding employees accountable, you know, holding the superintendent to hold employees accountable. And so when you go on Wednesday and really any training that you have prior to getting into office, I just would keep your antennas up because it's going to seem like the superintendent is your boss. They're going to be communicating in a way that the superintendent, but he is not. He is an employee of the board, and he is an employee of the community, and um, and that's one of the things that you know. If if you, um, depending on how you view things, if if you don't like the way things are currently being run, that's one of the biggest challenges we have is who's really in charge, right. and um, and so keep that in mind when you go to some of these functions, especially prior to being elected, um, because they. They make all the decisions right now. Uh, we sat down with uh, Gotardi, Brian Gotardi, um, prior to the the vote, and uh, what vote? The, the sex ed vote in 2016. And he said, "Okay, guys, to Patrick and I, what do you got? I'm certain you know more about this than I do. I haven't even read it." And the, none of the board did. And he gets paid. He got paid so freaking much money. Yeah, he makes. Four hundred thousand a year or something, I think. Yes. And I met with him and said, "This is in violation of the Texas Education Code," and I walked him through it. And well, my employees say it's not, so no problem here. Yeah. So. Uh, so what I thought we could do, uh, we're all we're all trying to we're we're all here trying to be a resource and doing everything we possibly can. So I want to give some other individuals some time to talk about what they do. And again. If you have any questions, email Patrick, email myself, Dana. We can get we can wrap we can get Scott's numbers for you if that's what you want. We can do all kinds of things. But I want to uh, pass uh, or give give us a, a a little bit about what how you might be able to help some of these candidates. And so we have uh, Jordan here, and Jordan is a technology guru. He's social mainly social media, right? Uh, so I own several businesses. Um, most relating, relating to business consulting, video production, marketing, and stuff like that online. Okay, so he's your online, potential online connection, uh, and, and uh, he's a resource here that we, we want to um, make available to everyone here. Um, uh, none, of these, none of these guys will work for free, they've got, they've got to pay the bills just like everybody else does, 
but they understand the importance of this. They understand that we've got to get your name out there. They understand exactly your objectives. And uh, so, Jordan, do you have any material or anything? Yeah, I'll say this. I'll give a lot of advice for free. Okay. So I'll, I'll refer you guys for free. Good, <laughs> good. So if you want to get a hold of Jordan, uh, again, let us know. And then I, I, I don't want to, I want to move along as fast as we can because we really do have to get, we're spo they told us to get out of here at 6.30. It is 6.30. I'm going to push it to whatever it takes. But I, I want to now jump to Ryan. Ryan has uh, worked with uh, uh, Patrick on all three or two? Or I think uh, two. Oh, two. He only has Correct. two. That's right. Only, only two. Yeah. Uh, so my name's Ryan. I, uh, I've been in marketing for about eight years now. Uh, I went to Trinity. Uh, during that time, I you know was fortunate uh, fortunate enough, excuse me, to work with Brad Parscale, which was a lot of fun. Um, you know, a lot of cool insights there. Uh, but, you know, it's you know websites. I can put them up. It's not my strength. You know, I really enjoy kind of consulting and building campaigns and whatnot. Um, so you know, same thing. Feel free to text, email, call. Um, and then I guess my one little piece of advice for y'all is just be authentic. Um, don't do the whole cookie cutter. You know, replies whether it's for an email, you know, text message, or if someone has uh, a question. No one likes that. No one, no one appreciates it. Um, so whether you're doing video production, whether you're, you know, whether it's just having a conversation with someone, just be genuine, and you know that will that will go a long way. So, but, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. <coughs> also, a racquetball extraordinaire. If anyone wants to play, so. I, I have a good friend that plays serious racquetball. Do you know him, Carlos Ramirez, by chance? I, I'm not on the serious level. Oh. <laughs> 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 that's yeah. Okay. And then I, I, I want to. There's two other individuals. If you just uh, uh, indulge me here a bit, and that is um, a good friend. Unfortunately, he's a Central Catholic grad, so they, they're known as the, oh, the Central sorry. Catholic <laughs> Ma Mafia, is what they call themselves. But uh, uh, John Trollinger, he goes by JT, and uh, he's been friends of Danny, Patrick, my, I, well, they went to school together, so many, many years. Anyway, uh, JT, uh, you got the floor. Sure. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, certainly I don't have the, the marketing experience that you guys have, but from a technical perspective, you know, I can do the websites as well. You know, if you, if you need help setting up a, a, you know, some type of a funding page and, you know, help getting it out to your friends, you know, to, to try and raise money, because it sounds like that's probably the, the, the biggest immediate issue is, is, is getting funding to be able to, uh, to take on this campaign. Um, you know, so I can, you know, maybe in concert with you guys, should be willing to, willing to help you out. You know, I'm, you know, I certainly under, understand the, the the marketing and the social media uh, part of it. You know, I can I can do it if I need to, but I'm I'm more of a, a back end operations kind of guy. But he does do Facebook, just so you guys know. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Um, so you know, you know, I'll, I'll do whatever I can to help fill in the gaps. Thank you, JT. I, 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 I'm teasing him because he hates Facebook because so much junk out there. And I understand where he's coming from. But, uh, obviously, a campaign's a little bit different. Yes, I understand. But he always gives me a hard time. And I got this data, and it was not from Facebook, is what he tells me. Uh, so JT, can, he's the back, the, the back room kind of guy, the technician that can take care of some of this stuff. Um, and then we have um, our promotion a person, uh, Dina Cortez, and uh, Dina's, if you, if you like what SAFA does, and our, our artwork and what have you, and our, you know, our logos, and our websites, and stuff, you know, the, I'm talking about the content on it, uh, chances are Dina's touched it, or designed it, or whatever the case might be, so Dina, if you could just, um, Maybe, yeah, you have the floor. So in addition to being a home school, I've been a, a freelance marketing and public relations consultant for 20 years, and I do everything from <coughs> leases and copywriting to graphic design. I do a lot of signage for clients, and just a lot of consulting on creating a, a whole campaign for a product or a service on the public campaign. I have Patrick on both his campaigns. I work a lot with SAFE. And, and in the well, past, she's modest because we, if you don't know, you know, we have the, uh, <coughs> the lawsuit against the city of... San Antonio, uh, restricting the Chick-fil-A, so Dina's had to jump in. We have an attorney that does 
doesn't have a personality. So Steve has had to jump in, and we've had to do some things because he's he's a brilliant attorney in the courtroom, but everywhere else he stinks. I gotta tell you. <laughs> and so she's had to do a lot, and then we had to start a GoFundMe page. We had some 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 uh, interfacing with him with, without stepping on his toes or or or. Or letting the the opposition know what we're doing. I mean, you can imagine some of this stuff is very technical. So um, she's been able to do do that kind of stuff too, though. So. Yeah. So I, I kind of think of. I mean, I really do freelance, and I feel in the gaps where people need it. So I am a big picture person. I can coordinate with other people if I need to. But if you only want certain things, you only need help with certain things. I'm certainly you know open to doing that too. Uh, I think the thing that I really I'm always concerned about, it, and Mike and Patrick can tell you, is that I'm a real, I'm a real uh, believer in a consistent message, clear message, being really smart with the way, with everything you do. I'm a real detail person, so I really feel like you know, if you start from the beginning, knowing exactly what you, where you want to go with your campaign, to stay consistent, everything is, to, it, everything from pictures. <coughs> to the words that you use, to the website, it has to go together so that your audience, you know, the people, the voters in these districts understand who you are. And again, I, I uh, reiterate Brian's advice to be authentic and just really come out and say why you're running, how you feel about running, Should why you you're doing that. Do you have a template? Do you have a template to kind of follow, you know, to... Um, I mean, I in my mind I do. I don't have necessarily anything written, but I mean, when I... When I meet with people, I kind of think about what strategy I would go with when I meet with somebody, and then I kind of make a checklist for myself, and we talk about it. And again, if they want don't want to do certain things, I'm not one to say, okay, we have to do this, or you know, I'm out. So I kind of work with what I've got. Um, I, you know, obviously have been working with Patrick and Mike for a while. I'm, I want to help for issues like this because they're so important. Sure. I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking bigger picture because obviously, I mean, if you're, you're working one on one, that's great. But, you know, it's because we have because we have five candidates yeah, try, yeah. trying to stand them up all at the same time. I'm yeah. thinking if there's like a template that could that where they can now say, hey, here's the things you need to think about. Start putting something together. Sure. I mean, well, we then, can just certainly talk about that. I mean, obviously, the, that's the, a good the, idea. the, the yeah. goal would be to make everybody be a little bit different so they're not c conveying yeah. the exact same message. But yeah, I but, think but that's get, a great but get idea. Everybody <coughs> Absolutely. Okay, so just to give you an overview here, and that is, um, of course, you all know Melissa in, in the sex ed, and you've been you've all been through that except for uh, some of the vendors here. Well, I mean with Joe Lumpen saying. Yeah. Oh, okay, so. Uh, yeah, so it, Sam, it'll wake you up, right? Yeah. I mean, it'll. And I would, I'm also probably learned a lot about parent rights in general, so not from a lawyer standpoint, but how the system is not working for parents. So if you have anybody that you come across that like has a complaint or a grievance, I would say, you know, feel free to send them in my direction. Um, I can help advocate for them in the process of, you know, if they have a new grievance that needs to go through or whatever based on or, what I Or opt out, opt in. Yeah, that those kind of, kind of things. Yeah. yeah. So uh, just to kind of summarize, um, we want to be here as a resource. Uh, we want to do something. We want to do something to help support your, your candidates, wh whatever that is. Um, we we, uh, we we San Antonio Family Association have an apostolic zeal to do this because of the what, what's on. You know, this is our children and grandchildren we're talking about here. But just to give you an overview. So we we have resources like. Uh, Randy, we have resources like Melissa, of course, Patrick and myself, and uh, so you get together with Jordan and you do a, a cool video, for instance, a well shot video, you get it over to Ryan, and he does, you know, the, the uh, putting it up on the website or whatever the case might be, and get the exposure, you know, that type of thing. JT makes certain that, you know, your Facebook connects with your this, connects with your funny bone connects with whatever else and if there's a broken you know so you use more of the technical and I forgot Dina so we take the video we go to Dina we we wordsmith it and make sure the message is nice crisp and, and clean as you put it and then back to, to Ryan so I missed you there sorry and then <clears throat> then um, if you have something you know from the web page that she said okay this this is my push card or this is my hanging card or this is my sign or whatever it is uh, and you feel you want to go with uh, some signage or what have you, uh, we get it to your printer or we could, we could get it to Scott or call us if you need some. 
I, I, Scott's not here, but I'm here to tell you, Scott, she'll tell you. Scott, Scott's the best in town, and he's a wholesaler. That's the kicker. He's a wholesaler. And so he does this stuff at wholesale prices. So if you know anything about wholesale versus retail, they're going to want their 10% of retail or whatever. And I, I think the, the place to start, though, is to figure out what, uh, what your budget is, what, what you think you're going to be spending, who you can contact to make that happen, and then work into... Well, JT mentioned he, he could do, uh, you know, some raising some funds. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay. that's a big deal. Yeah. That takes time. What, what I would like to ask is, we need $75,000 as a team, according to what uh, Scott's mm -hmm. numbers were. So, there's... 75,000 bucks is what we need to win as a team. Mm -hmm. And we can raise money on our own, but it's going to take time and it'll, it'll, it'll uh, trickle in. Mm -hmm. But if we can get a heavy donor, a big donor, who can just write that check. Or then several, we, or you know, a handful of, I'm thinking of a few I, people that... We have clients yeah. and maybe Safa has a list. Who know, You know who your people are that have that kind of money. But in your mm -hmm. business and in my business, we have clients who have money set in the bank. And we just need to get in touch with that right person who supported us. Well, goal. yeah, I mean, we can certainly, uh, to, to be a resource. I don't have that kind of money. I understand. To be a resource, um, we do not have, we have zero issue if you have one of those big donors. Of course, we don't want to do it for all the, the nickel and dimes because we don't have that kind of time. But you have those donors that you think could be stroking a check for 10000 bucks or 5000 bucks or whatever. Um, then call us and let us know who it is, what you're trying to accomplish, and we will make we will make the we can make the outgoing phone call, or we can do it in conjunction with you and do it together on a conference call, and then we can go out and visit with them about you. Sometimes the the distance from the candidate to the persons is sometimes works in our benefit. Sometimes it doesn't, by the way. Sometimes they want to see the candidate right in their living room. I mean, so. But we are there to assist in making phone calls, contacts, sending them information, uh, plugging you, propping you, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and even making the, the initial contact if that's helpful. Yes, we can do that. Well, it's just a better sales pitch for some people to say, um, you're contributing to getting a majority rather than you're mm -hmm. contributing to... Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because right. you, you have a better chance of actually getting yeah, absolutely. it through. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you have those kinds of contacts, we can definitely do it. We have done that. We do do that. I mean, you were saying, as any ISD goes, so goes a lot of the city, dis the other districts. Right. So it's a big victory if we can get on the board and together as a team. It's, it's, it's a, huge. It's absolutely and, huge. And there's got to be a wealthy person who cares about this <laughs> enough to put the money there. Yeah. I well, don't we, know that person. We, well, we have tons of people, you know, let me just tell you that, that uh, just so you know how safe it works is, okay, this donor here uh, is Dove Hunt. This donor here is, you know, or, or uh, Egg uh, Hunt. This donor here is our campaign deal. This donor here, okay, so we, we already know, he knows this, the, the Dove Hunt people is a whole other animal in, in and of itself. So it, do we have a bunch of, of uh, high net worth individuals that are willing to cut a check for just any? No, I mean, we don't have a list like that. Nobody has a list like that. But working with you, we, we can start thinking of different, and, and talking to people and, and let them know yeah, exactly. You know, I, I, think, I think everybody at, the, at a minimum has to put together their uh, who, who am I and why am I running? Yeah, we yeah. So, so, that. so that you've got that story so then that you can start to approach approach these big donors and say, hey, look, here's an impact for you to make, or here's an opportunity for you to make an impact in this district. Here's here's five candidates that we've got who are running on family values and who truly care about the right. students and who are going to make, you know, uh, you know, morally conscious decisions. And then once you've got that message and you can ha actually have something to hand to them, mm -hmm. then be able to get them in, fr in front of that person yeah. to make the decision. But you, I mean, you gotta have. I think that's you gotta that's have where that. That's you have to start. Is yeah. what's the message, and why would why should they support? Yeah. So we could do it. We could do it uh, on the QT collectively. Now there's some danger. Just so everybody here knows, if we do it on the QT collectively, if 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 it should get out, for instance, you're all burning together too. Uh, so. There's a double-edged sword here that you need to be aware of. Well, I'm a big fan of operating in faith instead of fear. 
Yes. And I think I think that he's right when, you know, don't be the first one to throw out my name when you show up on Wednesday night. <laughs> don't be the first one to throw out Safe's name because we already are in the doghouse with them, you know. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you don't know the story, you need to hear it from her. They shut us down when Safe got wind of it. And that man was there. And who else was here the other day? Osborne? Yeah. Okay. Northeast Independent School District, when we went to the CHAC meeting. They shut us down out there at the Blossom. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, he was there. Anyway, so you just need to know that right when SAFE got wind of this sex ed and we started pushing the envelope, they shut us down. And they know so us in this. If, if I could make a comment. No, I think you had your hand up first. <laughs> um, as candidates, like, we know why we're running. And that's, I mean, what the impetus was to change the sex ed curriculum. There's probably other things that need to be changed. Yeah. Maybe there's, a, there's probably a lot of things that are just mm -hmm. But we know that. We don't need to announce that to the world. You know, if you remember in 2010, the, the, the Republican sweep, the, the Tea Party sweep, they didn't come in saying we're going to do pro-life laws and, and you know all kind of religious freedom laws. They came on on economics. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know they had a, a no school responsibility, a different message, which was good. But they didn't put out all the stinger issues mm -hmm. that they stood for. And once they got elected, then they started doing the right thing. That's right. So yeah. we have to be careful not to be even in your own Facebook campaigning and everything else that you're doing with your friend, talking up the one yeah. sex ed issue that's got us riled up. Talk about, you know, there's a bigger campaign, there's a bigger job than Absolutely. one sex ed. Absolutely. And we're doing this for the children, the grandchildren in yeah. the district, mm -hmm. and uh, want to make certain that it's the best but school district. you're going to help us with that, right? Absolutely. Yes, sir. So here's something that I'm, I think I can give some good advice on, is work on OPSEC a little bit. Um, and OPSEC is operational security. Um, I mean, it is kind of a boring campaign, it's, it's not like there's crazy conspiracies going on, but opposition is interested in what kind of meetings you're at, what kind of things you're saying on Facebook, what kind of things you're doing in your personal life, and it's easier and easier for tech guys like myself to figure out what you guys are up to. So, so get off I went through <laughs> my Facebook page and I deleted all the stuff that could, pet, could, could tag me as, mm -hmm. oh, he's this kind of candidate. Or he's one of those pro-life guys, or he's one of those whatever guys, and you want to be I neutral. Delete it at all, not just hiding it, but deleting it. it takes time because we post things well, so quickly. Well, and so there's easy. tools that can mass delete things, and every social media network works differently. And certain ones like Facebook, there's a certain tokenized system that makes it very difficult for someone like myself to look through what your deleted posts were. But like Twitter, I can figure out what someone's deleted posts were mm -hmm. because Twitter, uh, the way it works is it basically is saved forever on Twitter. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't have Twitter. <laughs> I would encourage you guys, if you have Facebook, <coughs> go back and look at your timeline and your history. Because the first thing they're going to do, first thing I do is I, go, I look at somebody's Facebook page. I'll look at Google and name. And really, it's not about? just Facebook. I mean, if you just do a general search on yeah. your name, yeah. 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 there might be What's judgments in your past, yeah. things that you Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of sites <laughs> out there that'll bring So, up stuff I mean, you. that's a good place to start. I mean, I still know certainly cre up. credit credit sites it's will have name. all kinds of information <laughs> about you. And unless you make the request to have them scrub it, that it'll be out there. So... That's a good point, Sam. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, another thing is, uh, let's say you have five thousand dollars. You want to lend yourself five thousand dollars. You don't. You know the funding's going to take time. You don't have time to wait. Okay. So what you can do is talk to your treasurer and say, "Look, I am going to lend the campaign five thousand dollars." And you literally put together a note and mm -hmm. with an amortization schedule. What, however you want, however detailed you want to get it. But it needs to be signed by you and your treasurer, and it's totally, and I'll, I can check with Patrick to see if there's any other requirements, but you want to make certain that if you're doing this, that that's something that you consider right now up front, and say, okay, I'm going to lend myself or my campaign 5000 2000 whatever the number is, and uh, you make certain your treasurer is aware of it, everybody's aware of it. We'll talk to Patrick, see if there's any other requirements. I don't know what's required. You've got to report it as a loan. Pardon? You got to report it on your campaign financial. Yeah, you got to report it there, and then I don't know what the reporting is prior to the race because they have, they have most of the races we're involved in seven days prior or eight day prior. There's a thirty day prior and an eight day prior. Okay, so a thirty day and eight day but prior. We don't so got to do anything until April. Right. Um, Second. Danny is not here. Danny is our accountant, and he's a, a board member. 
And so what we could do is you're going you're gonna to be responsible for your own numbers, but I would recommend that uh, you, you either use your accountant if you don't know how to do it or where to report. He doesn't either. We've not done an uh, a, uh, independent school district before, but um, he might be able to help you, you know, putting that together and making certain that you, you send the report out. So 30 day prior, that's prior to the vote, 8 day prior. And the purpose for that is really opposition is really what it is. That, that's why they know that Trump raised whatever, a billion dollars, you know, which is five times more than the Dems total or whatever. That's how they know that stuff. It's from that reporting. So, so you've got another meeting with Lynette, and I know Lynette, she's another attorney on Notre Dame alum, and she could, she just got on there. She just went through this, what we're going to go through. Yeah, Judson Independent School District, and Lynette she'll is, huh? She'll be helpful. Yeah, she's a, a conservative, and she'll be very helpful on some of the things that you're, that, that you're going to be going through, and that is on um, Saturday. And it's probably downstairs in our office, it is, downstairs in our office. And uh, she's going to be a great person to talk to. She'll talk about uh, Judson's a little bit, kind of like uh, Randy. Judson's not the same school district, a different school district. So there's going to be some, some differences. But, uh, Although I will say, they also, my research shows their sex ed hasn't gone to the dark side either. It's interesting. That, Judson, uh -huh. really. Yeah. What was, what did you say? Judson. Judson. They have not gone, they to, haven't gone to the dark side on sex ed. Yeah, give it a chance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I just think it's an indication of how the you know how the board is protecting children. You know, I mean, if they're if they're protecting them in that area, they're they, they protecting them elsewhere too. That that whole dog thing. I thought they don't care about the kids. Mm -hmm. They're not there. But I have a really basic question. So I've never done anything like this before. But so if someone says, okay, I want to write you a check. How? How do we open an account first? Read, it's all in there. Read your packet. Mm -hmm. Learn that packet. Okay. It tells you about okay. what you can accept and how checks. Take checks. Don't take cash. Because right. there's a $100 limit for right. cash for the whole period. So just take checks. And then just open up a personal account at the bank. What? Can each individual a candidate it's not gonna, do a GoFundMe page? You can. Yeah, but you, you just have to you just have to put the whatever the limit is. On you, there. Can't, you can't take any more. Everybody who donates has to report. Names. What is the limit? Mm -hmm. Per per donor. I don't believe there is a yeah, limit. There is a limit for yeah, PACs and union. You can't take union money or lobby money. So you could have one person come in that. and do a GoFundMe. So for fifty thousand bucks, one person can do that. We just gotta get their name and address and maybe their occupation. I, I don't know that. Everything that I've ever yeah. worked on has a limit. I, I don't know how that works. Yeah. Well, so, the reason what I'm thinking here is yeah. kind of along like Sims' idea of you know seventy-five thousand dollars to lift all five candidates to a point that um, we can make this happen. Well, I. Um, I, if we had individual GoFundMe pages that the candidates could send out to their friends, who then send out to their friends, who then out. To we could set it up that as one, we could think about the best way to, you know, they're supporting you, so then do you point them to help this candidate too, or you know, like how do we then, you know, no. this person? Well, yeah, you want to be no, you don't. Yeah. No, I, th I think yeah. I think the multiple. But I'm thinking there's some some version of uh, not coordinating work right. is what in what I mean, but like right. a way to get out to figure out who those donors. You know, our I think you, you have to you have to take a multi pawn approach. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you, every as individuals, you guys need to get a GoFundMe page set up. You need to identify the folks that you're going to send. Well, out. Go, just so you know, GoFundMe. If there's another way of doing it, well, yeah, there, there is. There's there's <coughs> GoFundMe is three percent. <coughs> no, no, I understand. There's Type page like a three. Well, it's three years. Eight. Eight percent. Yeah. Eight. 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 Eight percent. Okay. Yeah. GoFundMe was eight percent of anything. I, I, mean, I mean, I'm using that as an example. Yeah. So, b bottom line is, is everybody needs to get an individual page set up. They need to identify who the individuals are. So, like I said, if you got sixty friends and you can get the meets to give two hundred fifty dollars, boom, you're there at fifteen thousand. Yeah. Okay. So that I mean, everybody needs to get that going. Then we we need to everybody needs to get their uh, you know get get their pieces put together. What are they running on? And then identify the, the identify the big. We need to be working these in parallel. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. because you know, if you don't, if you sit there and do them in serial, we're never going to get there. No. Uh, what I what we you should be doing this first week is literally picking up the phone and calling everybody that you know and say, look, you need to know. It's going to be published soon. In case you need to know, I'm running. And let me tell you why I'm running. I'm running because uh, 
yeah. the children deserve the best, or whatever messaging that you and Dina and whatever put together. I, I want to make a difference. I, it's, it appears that that you know past uh, records, you know, it's seven zero seven zero seven zero. Uh, they're just you know they're just rubber stamping whatever the superintendent wants, and we, we believe there's more to it. The bond money's coming up. Whatever you guys can come up with, okay. And so <clears throat> we're reaching out to everyone we know. I am reaching out to everyone I know. And I, I was on the hopes that you could, it, I, don't know if it, I don't know your financial situation, but I was hoping you could, is there any way within your means you can cut a check for $1,000? And they'll say, no. Sam, I can't. They will say, no. Sam, I wish I could. I just bought a boat or whatever. Well, I was going to ask. And then what you say, this is key, guys. Then what you say is, I understand. What can you give me? Yeah. Just like that. Mm -hmm. And the first person that talks loses. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, how you do it. You, just, you say, we used to do it for, you know, a lot of you guys know, I started Rolling Hills with another half a dozen other families. Mm -hmm. and we literally would call whoever and say, are you in a position of giving us a million dollars today? And we did, we did use a million, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And they said, no. I just can't. Well, I understand. He said, well, you know, I just did this, and my company, and taxes, and, you know, whatever. I said, what can you give us? And we'd walk off sometimes with 20000 10000 30000 We'd walk off with that. We bought 20 acres of land. If you don't know what, what now it's uh, St. Uh, Jose... Uh, One name. Uh, Jose Santos del Rio. Uh, he's the uh, great saint that uh, was martyred at... 12 years of age, 10 years of age. They sliced off the skin off the bottom of his feet and they made him walk across Mexico during the Three Sevens War. So it's a great saint. It's a long name. <laughs> they had to call it Saint Josie or something. <laughs> something. But anyway, um, uh, we bought 20 acres of land. We bought a building across the street that was $600,000. Uh, we, we bought, you know, all kinds of stuff. We had bought a, we got a soccer field, we had all kinds of stuff. And that's how we did it. And so you can do that too, it's just that you don't ask for a million dollars, you ask for a $10,000 check or a $1,000 check, whatever you want to ask. But anyway, you start with the total complete. Now, you might, you'd be surprised. Some people say, can I do it over a five-year period of time in, in our scenario? Okay, you know, we'll <laughs> figure something out. Um, you're not going to have that, that kind of a situation, but um, can you... Are you in a position where you could, after you tell your story, could donate to my campaign $1,000? <coughs> Another idea, which is coming out from a different direction, and I don't know what the, what the hook would be, and I don't like using that term with the example I'm going to give you, but um, we did a, song, a fundraiser for Songram one time, and we gave the percentages what 95% of women who see their sonogram do not abort their baby. Right, and it costs about two hundred fifty dollars to administer a sonogram. And so, when you told people for two hundred fifty dollars, you can save one baby. You'd have people write a check for a thousand dollars. I'm going to save four babies. Maybe there's something along those lines that impacts people's hearts related to our children in the schools that we might be able to figure out a way to kind of, it's not as easy to quantify as that potential well, there be, is, no, just something hit, where it can no, just hit me, of, there is and that is if you think about it the school district makes fifteen thousand dollars for every child for one child fifteen thousand dollars i can be on the board and be able to protect the children and do the things that i need to do for what it costs one child to go through the year. So you could do so how do we break like that, that down to something that's a little easier know. for the average person? But yeah, I see what you're saying there. You There's... could do something like that because mm -hmm. you can't show them the outcome like you can with abortion. Right, you can't show the outcome. You can't say, and something. they're, you know, in Harvard. Right, <laughs> yeah, it's not as, <laughs> as direct. But I'm thinking there might be... Why would you think of Harvard? <laughs> <laughs> I, I... But anyway, I... But so you need to plan to wait somehow. I've worked in a lot of fundraising, and I actually do regular work with Women's Haven, which is a mm -hmm. pregnancy crisis center down San Antonio. Tying what money is exactly going to, even if you, um, you're just saying, you know, 
I need this money so I can send out mailers to people. Mm -hmm. When people know where the money is going to, they're a lot more interested in donating because otherwise they're just like, well, he just wants money, who knows where it goes to. But when you say, I, I'm asking you to write me a check for $250 so that way I can send out mailers to 1,000 people in this district, mm -hmm. are you able to write yeah, me that check? And they say, I can do one for 150 or whatever. Jordan is great. Or I can do 500 yeah. because I want to do, yeah, that, that's another way to make it actionable without having to make a promise you can't fulfill, yeah. and you can give, that's a great idea, yeah. Uh, Ryan, do you have any, uh, any uh, thoughts? The donor, I mean, they all are right on the money with this, I guess, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, I think, I think go, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, so I, uh, I'll have to go back through my uh, messages, but there is a, there was like a little fundraising tool um, that a high school in uh, Lavernia used to fundraise for the football team, and it was really cool. Basically, it sends the person a personalized link and it has the goal amount of seven thousand dollars, and it shows you know we're right at seven hundred and fifty dollars. And with your support, it will push us over the edge. And so I'll let you do that on like a bigger scale. So if I can find that, um, I can send that to y'all. I think the fees were pretty low. It might have just been a like a one-time cost, uh, but something like that where you can you know like you said show the benefit, uh, make it personalized, and then you can scale. Um, it's been it's been a while, but I'll uh, I'll dig through that. And That'd can, be great, right? Yeah, if I can find it, I can uh, send that to okay. Patrick. Okay. Facebook hey, really wants me to install some kind of donate button. Who does? Facebook. Have you signed? Just so you know, if you have not signed, we will we refuse to sign the equitable treatment whatever whatever that thing is and diversity and all that stuff. Um, but you guys had that donate button on that big donate day, didn't you? Well, I, that's where I'm going. Okay. So I understand. I don't know this for sure. Talk to JT. He loves Facebook so much. But um, talk to him or one of these other guys. My understanding is to run an ad now and add a donation button, you've got to sign that uh, SOGI. That's the best way I can put it. It's a SOGI uh, uh, letter. You will not post anything that's, you know, not that goes against diversity and everything well, else. Well, we're not. We're not going to be doing that. I understand. Yeah, especially if so, it's not an issue for us. So, so yeah. depending on where you are there, then sign that and go ahead and do it. My understanding is you can't put the donate button on it now. We did it years ago, and I think they want to take it off because we didn't sign it. So anyway, Also, if you're not already signed up to run Facebook ads, it's probably going to take you... Oh, three yeah. weeks right yeah, now. Yeah, right Oh, to get approved. I got yeah. I got approved all in today mm -hmm. to run that to do the boosting. Right. Mm -hmm. Say when I've ever done it. It took me an hour from start to finish. Have you verified your home address and all that crap? That letter's gonna come in, okay. but I already put boosted one. They rejected my ads until I finally got the code. Yeah. yeah. I'm temporarily That's approved. Oh, okay. So you can go back and unapprove is what you're saying, maybe. Uh, yeah. Until you get something in. Or yeah, it took me a few tries actually. They've definitely changed it since. So do it as soon as possible, at least get approved first. Yeah, so they will allow people to donate. Uh, well, now they're pushing it on me, but before they wouldn't, and they were rejecting the ads that I was putting together, even though they were suggesting, here's the ad you should run, and I would yeah. go through all the process. <laughs> and at the end, they would say, you're rejected for violating our advertiser policy because you haven't put the code in yet. Yeah. Yeah. And then once I got the code, there was like another phase you have to go through. Uh, Jordan, Ryan, Ryan JT, they did they start a hashtag? You know, hashtag, well, I like Mike, that kind of thing? Well, or, I think they need, across the board, I mean, they need... Uh, a hashtag, uh, you know, a domain name. Um, you know, okay. I mean, obviously, if they have, have a, waste, uh, a Facebook site already, is a website going to have a big impact on this short of timeline? I mean, it's kind of like one of the check boxes that that guy was talking about that you just kind of have to have it. Yeah, yeah. Where you have your presence, where if they want to go learn more about you. But you got to think about your resource, your time, mm -hmm. and where you're, yeah, you're a lawyer, I'm a lawyer. How much time do we have? And People can Google your name and see your Facebook page. Yeah, because you can make it searchable on all the other search engines. Well, I, and, I, and let's not forget what Jordan said. That is a, a, a video. So, so if you don't have time, if you don't, if you do not have time to sit there and write, not that anybody's going to read it anyway. But if you don't have time to write this this CV that you put together, whatever, while you're the perfect candidate, hey, here's your guy. Spend ten minutes, do a video. <coughs> Slapping everywhere, you could you could uh, tweet the video. You could I mean you all Facebook. Facebook, and, and, Facebook does really well with videos, yeah. not so much other social media sites. Yeah, and, and the web and the web page doesn't need to be elaborate. I mean, page, yeah. I mean most web people page. when they go to a page anyways, they they want to hey what, what why am I here? Mm -hmm. 
you know, put, you know, put bullet points, you know, why am I doing it? and then, you know, like, don't donate here button. Is that something you can volunteer and help yeah. with? That doesn't take much. Yeah. Sorry to put you on the spot, but no, I think that, okay. I think some of our candidates could use some help and just that very, very basic but there's a cost with domain and there's a cost with the software. Yeah, yeah. It? Well, the the, the domain, yeah, the domain you have to get. Um, and surely we could do even just a basic like Wix or what is it? I mean, I don't know Wix. Yeah, so just some basic free yeah, thing the, to yeah. get through 90 well, days. You, usually, what you do, what you do is the, the sites where you get your domain name. They provide a web mm -hmm. hosting that comes with it. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, we, we, I mean, we can look at that. I mean, there, there's a lot of different options out there. But. Maybe I can talk about it. Yeah. yeah, but y'all are right on the money. Like, what, what you guys are doing is you're building a cake, and you have all your different ingredients. So you want your signs for, you know, your top of the funnel awareness. Um, you want your website because, guess what, the day of the election, everyone's going to Google, they're going to do the research, and that's probably the only time they're ever going to go to your website. Mm -hmm. uh, so like you said, you know, single page, videos, excellent idea, and then just like a, a FAQ, you know, issue one, Two to three sentences. Uh, question two. You know, two to three sentences. Really simple, mm -hmm. sweet. It should load extremely fast. And then I think if you do something like that, you know, you're you're going to maximize your you know return on time spent and then um, money spent too. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, I you know I, I can certainly I can certainly help you guys. You know, you know, get to the site, get the domain name, set up the web page. I mean, you know, to that point, you guys are going to have to provide the. The content that's going to go on there, work with George to do the video. Um, you know, I can we can try and find a good uh, inexpensive uh, um, donation site. You know, to take money. most of the sites that I've seen are in between three and four point nine percent. You know, and, mm -hmm. and per, per transaction cost. But. Well, we we uh, getting back to the donors. We'll, we we will have certain donors we're going to reach out to and talk about our objective here, but. Um, you should not wait for that. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you. Uh, even though you and I and all of us, and Sam, you're all you know, we're all we're all committed here. This this is I mean, you're not you're not the egg in the frying pan right now. You are the bacon. <laughs> you are totally committed. Okay. Don't wait on anyone. Start making phone calls today and say, look, I want to let you know firsthand before you hear it anywhere else, I am running for Northeast Independent School District. And here's why. You know, they have a, mi a billion dollar budget. Our kids are not getting smarter. You know, throwing more money at the kids doesn't make them smarter. We have broken things inside. You know, and I I believe that I can make a difference. And I think I make a difference in this area or this area, whatever, you know, you guys have thought about this. And get that nice, clean, crisp message out there. And say, and then pose the question right on the phone or in person. In person might even be better. And just say, because uh, there's something about in person when I say, can you cut me a check for thousand dollars so that I can meet my objectives? I'm trying to get fifteen thousand. Fifteen of you guys, can you cut me a check? Can you afford or even in a position to cut me a check for thousand dollars? You know, Sam, I wish I could. I own it. I, I wish I could, but I, I can't. I just bought a boat or whatever. What can you give? And no kidding, he, he or she will say probably 250 maybe 500 who knows. But they're, here, here's what they're not going to say. Sam, I'm not going to give you a dime. They're not going to say that. That's, that's, that's all I know. One thing you could say to me as a parent that's frustrated with my school district is um, how much do you think you can support me with so that you'll want to keep your children in Northeast ISD? I mean, that's the decision I'm faced with right now, You're regardless pretty. of where we get moved, is I am praying every day about whether or not I can leave my eighth grader in the school system because his soul is at risk. Yeah. And how much might I pay to make sure that that can happen? You know, I mean, think of my alternative no, is eight, nine, ten thousand dollars a year per kid someplace else. Oh, but if I knew yeah. that yeah. I could help support five really strong candidates or one of the five, um, that, that, that would make a difference to me, um, especially knowing your values and knowing what you stand for. And so there might be some people that think of, think of it that way. You know, like we're, I think a lot of people are discerning what's next. And you put yourself, you put yourself on, or your kids on the charter school list, you're going to, like last year my kid was 84 for eighth grade at one campus on the wait list. <laughs> campus 54, he wasn't getting in, you know, so... Um, you know, even though parents aren't speaking up, I'm finding that parents are getting fed up. 
and they are choosing to go elsewhere. And so if th those kind of conversations might help bring in some well, money and, too. And, and, and I, might, I might add this, that the, like the sex ed deal that has got us all uh, some real passion. Um, See, so you, you, you know, you might say I'm not a salesperson, and based on what we know, that's go and the board didn't even read the first one. That let's say that you you're able to get on the board, it's simple education with your peers. It's really what it is. And as you were blown away with the material, they'll be blown away with the material. So we're not looking for you know fast talking salespeople to convince the whole board. It's, folks, they're just in the dark. They didn't even read it. And all they need is somebody with a little bit of knowledge of this stuff. And other things too, not just this, but you know, just, Dave, have you looked at this thing? This isn't what you might think it well, is. Well, just, uh, and just ask questions. And ask questions. So we're not, so kind of like Moses, right? He goes, I'm not a, Moses said, I'm not a well-spoken man. I can't do that, God. And God said, do it anyway. <laughs> I'll be there with you, don't worry about it. And so we shouldn't be overly concerned about having candid conversations with our peers on the board. It's really not that big of a deal. It's not. You just show them what, what you know. And they'll be flabbergasted like you are. So, so real quick, I, I noticed that there's two candidates um, who, are here, uh, who are running for um, District 6 that aren't here. Um, well, okay, so Steve is, um, he's a pilot, he's gone today, um, but he is very, very, very like-minded, you guys will love him, um, he'll be there on Wednesday night. Um, Dylan Percy, we learned about today at 4 o'clock when I got the email from Northeast ISD saying, here are the people that are signed up to run. And so the, the, I wrote on here that he appears to be a lawyer and he graduated from St. Mary's University in 2016, that was what I was able to turn for I jumped in the car. So we don't know a whole lot about him. Um, he might be like-minded. He might be like-minded. Um, we, we don't know, so there's some research we need to do there. But, you know, the interesting thing is three of these positions, District 1, District 3, well, actually, all, all of them, 3, 4, and 5, if you guys weren't running, these would be totally uncontested races. Right, right. Wow. And just think about the effort that went into um, – making sure we had candidates for these districts. Well, look at the effort that was put in to, to keep it quiet. Yeah. And, well, <laughs> On their I mean, part. Yeah, exactly. So they're not and, contested. And so, um, so anyway, so I mean, the fact that, and you know, Joe is a whole Holy Spirit gift in and of himself when it came to praying for all of this. I'll have to share this with you on Wednesday. But um, the one thing I want to encourage you to do, because the Holy Spirit is working big time. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason that we have five seats here, that we have a huge opportunity. I, I firmly believe the Holy Spirit's going to help deliver us the money. The Holy Spirit's going to help deliver us the vote. So I want to encourage you, get up every morning and pray and put your day in the hands of the Holy Spirit and listen. If he says, call so-and-so, you really don't want to, just do it anyway. Yeah, don't you know? forget to ask because if you don't ask, I mean, exactly. That's part of it. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I mean, having that conversation and and really listening, um, you know, the the the. I mean, I I think I could write a book on the Holy Spirit experiences over the last two weeks just with this. Well, and this we started this fighting this yeah, two years a long, ago, yeah, a long and then time we met ago. Melissa, you know, a year after that, or, or shortly yeah. after that, and then we, if you don't know, we took the sex ed uh, to Austin. Uh, on the road, and we did a uh, legislative briefing in the Capitol, just so you know. And it was, she was there, we were there. It was packed. Yeah, it was. It was packed. I mean, there's talking just, a couple hundred people, yeah. legislators and their staff. It was yeah. packed. Yeah. There's so, a lot of fertile ground that is. Did right. you guys see the uh, the new ballot for the Republican Party that just came out? Did you see it? No. Okay, so the plank that's in there that says. The parents have the right to make the last decision on their kids' uh, sex education was because SAFA and others, I'm talking about Debbie and what have you, we all went down there to the Republican uh, convention here in San Antonio a, a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and we, so you, you guys, you're familiar with planks and platforms, right? Yeah. Okay, so this, so this became the platform, so it all bubbled up to where the platform and so now, 
platform, if it's if it if it uh, if, if it's approved, people vote on it. And I'm talking about the Republicans. Then that means that becomes a major platform in the Republican Party in the state of Texas, and essentially says just about everything we're going to talk about with kids and sex ed. Now it's a platform. Mm. So it's not a plank; it's the Mama Hoochie platform. So pray that goes good too, because that that's in the works. Believe it or not, uh, at the same election. Or no, it's a primary. I take that back. It's the primary. So it's going to already be done. Okay, well, that's good, though. Uh, it's, it's going to already be done. We'll know the results there. Yeah. All right, we have to wrap up. I apologize. I wish I had more time I could spend. Um, so next meeting. Next, next meeting is going to be Saturday here. <coughs> well, actually, downstairs at our office, if you haven't been down there. Uh, we're going to have uh, Lynette Pettis. Again, she is the Judson Independent School District trustee. She's new at it. Uh, Sim knows her. She's a, uh, a black conservative woman, very talented. She uh, uh, she can give you some real insights. She got elected like you know? just this last go around, last year. Last year, yeah. So she is living proof that you can get this thing done. I don't know what she was. Do you have any idea what her opposition, or who she was up against, or anything of that sort? Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be entertaining at the, at the least. <laughs> Is you're going to be able to pick her brain. Um, and then what we'd like to do is, if you have what you need and your campaign needs, let us know. And when I say us, I am talking about me, Patrick, and... and All right. You got a sign-up sheet with, like, Dina's number and everybody's number. Are you going to email that to us? Sorry, because I want to call Dina. Yeah. Uh, um, we'll share Dina's info. Yeah, I'll get it to Patrick, and I'll say, okay, I'm going to do this. Yeah, and I'll figure that out. He might... He, we might just do Info San Antonio Family Association. Well, we can't do that. Um, yeah, we got to go with the pack, yeah, because we get in trouble. So this. Um, do you need me to send it out? No. We might. I might be going with uh, Texas. Um, what is it? Uh, Texas Family Action, which is our pack. So we have a pack. If you don't know, we have a pack. It's broke. There's so money in it. But but we have a pack that we raise money for campaigns and things of this nature. And so anything we do politically, we have to do on that side. So it, it might be coming from Texas Family Action. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, thank you very much, folks. I appreciate yes. it. I hope this was helpful. And uh, one issue yes, Mike. that you might want to think about when formulating your uh, position paper is this recent suicide. <clears throat> And trying to get some information off the web about that it seems mm -hmm. like it sounds like they're just trying to cover it up. Hey guys, real quick, this is big. This is big. Yeah, what is On this? this issue of suicide, the other issue, if you don't know, I encourage you, like right now tonight, go to Google. It changes daily, and look at the number of te the inappropriate um, relationships the teachers have with kids right now in the state of Texas. And over the last four years, maybe it's five years, 123 teachers. It's um, a symptom of this. Inappropriate. Sex and some of them right here at dinner. Some yeah, up in Comal, I know, in the high school. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that could be something you put on your push card. You know, uh, something to the effect that the inappropriate relations between, uh, you know, uh, uh, teachers and children and, and students have has become alarming or you know, however you want to you know, tool it with her but that is people are aware of that they know what's going on. the last one was a coach if you recall i want to say it was uh, uh Har harlandale i think uh, a coach do you remember that or a security guard security guard or coach i forget anyway he had he got some um, young girl pregnant she was a i want to say freshman in high school so this is getting to be a bigger and bigger deal um and, but it's not sex ed, but it's it's related. It's a symptom of sex ed, though. It's a symptom, yeah. yeah. The way that they're teaching it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's because those teachers, by the way, who went up in Comal, which is uh, uh, Smithson Valley, my son goes to, she was uh, 26, 25. She's 25 years of age. And she was having sex with uh, with boys at, at school. And uh, my son had a talk, I had a talk with him. He said, well, man, how, how did this happen? I said, well, it's pretty simple. The sex ed curriculum was there 10 years ago, or 10 years prior to you when she was in high school. And 
right here in San Antonio, and what do you think is going to happen? And so the, 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 the planned promiscuity is working. It's even working for the teachers, if you think about it. Yeah. So anyway, uh, those are some hot items. This, uh, the way they're trying to cover up this suicide is definitely another one. Was that it? I didn't know. What it was a rig in high school. school. All right. Some kid was bullied. They went to the teachers, yeah. complained about it, and now they're saying five, we were never told. Oh. That's what we got now. How did he kill himself? Somebody told me it was hanging, and another one told me it was a gun or something. I didn't hear. Hey! 11 o'clock Wednesday. I'm glad you made it here tonight. Yeah, so. It's a simple event. Sure. It sounds like. Yeah, please. Yeah, you do this. That's good. Let's go up there. Okay. Because they have to go through. Michael, I think. Okay. Yes. So, 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 so,